Hello, welcome back. Today I wanted to walk you through uh, a typical microbiome. In this case, we're going to take a look at my microbiome. Um, I have my microbiome sequenced by a company called Day2. Now, this is not something that you need to do, um, but I think it's a useful exercise just to see what uh, biome is composed of. So this is my microbiome report from 2020, a few years ago now. When you look at my microbiome, you can start to see the diversity, uh, the complexity of my microbiome. You can see that there are many different genuses of bacteria. There's uh, uh, fecal bacterium, there's uh, bactericides bacterium, there's eubacterium. There's a variety of different species of microbiomes, and you can see that um, these are present in my system in various ratios. Uh, so, I just want you to know that we all have a lot of different species of bacteria in our system, typically three to four hundred or more, uh, depending on how much you look after your microbiome. So, let's dive into the specifics of what uh, day two saw with my microbiome. First of all, they look at a ratio of um, Bacteria dites to firmicutes, uh, looking at these two different um, phyla of gut bacteria. Um, and you can see the different ratios of me compared to the overall population. Uh, what they found was that my um, bacteria roides um, abundance is low compared to the average population, um, and that um, that's a good thing because a high ratio is um, correlated with um, obesity um, through a variety of different studies. So this is a good thing. Uh, overall, my ratios of uh, bacteroides to firmicutes is looking healthy. That's probably dependent on the types of foods that I eat. Next of all, they look at uh, bacteroides um, to Prevotella ratio. Um, again, comparing me to the general population. And you can see here that this particular abundance, again, is low compared to the average abundance in the population. Um, what does that mean? Um, high ratios are associated with a Western diet, which is high protein and high fat. We want to avoid the high protein, high fat diet. Um, so again, this suggests that my diet is on the right track for the most part. Now, if we start to look at specific species, you can see that, uh, for example, eubacterium. Um, my eubacterium ratio is a little higher. The presence is a little higher than the general population. Um, these are uh, important for digestion of complex carbohydrates uh, and suggest that uh, my system is good at coping with beans, legumes, and whole grains. Um, this uh, allostipes, uh, is another uh, bacteria that is important for digesting a plant-based diet. Um, and you can see that my ratio is higher than the general population, again suggesting that my diet is emphasizing a good amount of uh, plants over meat, where um, uh, this ratio would decrease. That's a good start. Um, then we'd see some interesting things. We see here this uh, fecal bacterium um, um, you can see that my level of Prasnitsi is really high um, compared to um, many people in the population, although this is a very abundant um, uh, bacterium in the population. Um, that's a good thing because this particular bacterium is known to boost our immune system and reduce inflammation. Um, this suggests that I've been doing some things correct to look after uh, some of the healthy bacteria in my microbiome. Probably one of the most important things I do is I exercise uh, regularly at least uh, 10 to 12 hours a week. So that's really helpful. And you can see having high levels of this bacterium is important to reduce your incidence of things like Crohn's disease, to re reduce your uh, propensity for obesity, for asthma, and major depressive disorders. So these have really important effects throughout the body. And so this is a, a, a good thing. Roseburia, another important bacteria that's associated with the Mediterranean diet and negatively associated with metabolic disease. That means the higher you go, the less metabolic disease um, and immune disorder or neurological diseases. Again, I'm higher than the regular population, which again, this is pretty encouraging.
However, there's some bad news here. Uh, when we start to look at um, microbiome, uh, microbiome organisms that produce big root vitamins, uh, for example, vitamin B1 thymine and vitamin B9 folate, uh, you can see that I lack most of the bacterium, 3%, 1%, most of the bacteria that produce these big root vitamins. So I need to start um, hitting foods that are high in big root vitamins, things like lentils and pecans and cantaloupe and green peas and oranges. I need to be hitting these foods um, to make sure I'm getting the vitamin B1 that I need. I need things like asparagus, or Brussels sprouts, um, broccoli, um, and avocado. Again, these are the foods that I must emphasize in my diet to make sure I'm getting the B group vitamins um, that I need. This is actually not uncommon for athletes. We place a great deal of strain on our system in terms of metabolism, and we need lots of B group vitamins. So this is something that I absolutely need to focus on. And most athletes, I think, benefit from focusing on the, these kinds of foods and emphasizing B group vitamins in their diet. So what did my report tell me? Um, in general, I'm looking after my microbiome pretty well, um, allowing many healthy species to survive and thrive. Um, my bacteriocytes to Prevotella uh, bacterial ratio is low, which is a good thing. Firmicutes to Bacteriodetes uh, ratio is uh, low, which indicates a pretty healthy microbiome. However, my microbiome is dominated by fecal bacterium uh, Presnitsi, um, so my microbiome needs more diversity. So that means I need to try to eat different kinds of fibers. Um, shortly after this, I started to swap out, uh, swap oatmeal in the morning for other kinds of grains. Um, so I wasn't eating the same grain every single morning um, to try and improve the diversity of my uh, microbial system. And my system lacks B group vitamin uh, production. So I absolutely must emphasize B group vitamins um, in the foods that I eat, and I, um, I do that regularly. Um, one of the hacks that I like to, to use is um, uh, yeast. Um, B-group vitamins can be found at high levels in nutritional yeast. So there you have it. Um, I hope you found uh, this little trip through my microbiome interesting and that you can see how complex the microbiome is and how you need to feed your microbiome with probiotic foods, a variety of different probiotic bacteria, and prebiotic fibers. And there you need a variety of fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains. Change it up and uh, support a healthy microbiome.